welcome to another ballistics comparison between two different calibers. Today we're doing the 270 Winchester versus the 6.5 Creedmoor. I apologize, it's been so long since I've done one of these. It's been a crazy year. And uh, I appreciate those that have hung around waiting for me to upload some videos. I've uploaded some videos of my lab recently doing some shed hunting, and I'll continue to do that, uh, as well as get some hunting videos out and some other things. But uh, I plan on staying and working with these ballistic comparisons. I love doing these. I do these more for me than anything as I research different calibers. And uh, this is all reloading data, and it's what I find. It's what's available on the bullet manufacturer's websites, on Hornady's and Nosser's load data. That's where I take it all from. It's funny, I get a few comments where people argue or disagree with me and uh, these are basically mathematical equations. You can go get the source yourself from the reloading manufacturer's website. Uh, this case, Nosler provides it. You can get it from Hornady as well. The only thing I did was compile it in one location. When I was researching different calibers, I did not see one location available where it had different comparisons like this. I had to do the data myself, and, and so I decided to start recording this and sharing with others. And I know a lot of people really appreciate it. If you're here to see comparisons and how they blow up watermelons, you're not going to see that here. This is a data comparison driven by the reloading data available from the manufacturers. And that is what I'm doing here. The hand loaders will recognize and understand this data. All right, let's get started. First, we go over recoil. There's no recoil data available for the 6.5 Creedmoor, so I took the low data or the recoil data for the 260 Remington, which is a fairly similar cartridge. Uh, at the 120 grain, moving at 2860 is 13 pounds of recoil, 10.6 velocity feet per second coming back to you. Um, the 140 grain is only 11.9. I'm assuming it's a lower performing load than the other one. It should be higher typically with a higher grain bullet, uh, but the Chuck Cox did not provide that information. This is all taken from the Chuck Hawks recoil table. You're welcome to look that up on Google. Moving on to the 270, the 130 grain is 6.5 foot-pounds of energy. The 140 is 17.1, 150 is 17. Again, probably a lower power load than the 140, which is why it's a lower there. So the, the difference between the Creedmoor and the 270 Winchester as far as recoil goes is going to be about 3 to 5 pounds. Again, that varies depending on the weight of the bullet and the, how fast that bullet is moving out of your barrel. Let's move on to factory ammunition. You can see these for the, at least for the Hornady bullets. This link right here, you can see the ballistics chart by from Hornady. Uh, this is an older one I have linked here. I, they usually update this every year, so you should see one for 2019 coming out here pretty soon. But it does list all of this data on their website as far as the feet per second from the muzzle, the energy, and the drop for these bullets. So you can see that there. Again, I'm just this is not my opinion. I'm just pulling the data from the manufacturers. If you have a beef with it, I would take it up with the manufacturer, but you're still welcome to leave a negative comment. I don't really care, but uh, I'm happy to present the data here. So the 145 grain ELDX Precision Hunter Ammo, you can buy at uh, most sports warehouses, sport, at Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops. 500 yards, it's moving 2157 feet per second. It has a uh, energy of 1497 foot pounds of energy 37.6 inch drop 140 grain SST has 1490 foot pounds of energy at 500 yards 35 inch drop the 130 grain GMX which is very similar to the SST slightly different design and the interlock for the bullet uh, this is for bigger game generally than the SSTs the 1407 foot pounds of energy there 33.9 foot drop 2208 feet per second 130 grain enter bond here, 22, 16, 14, 17, 33 inch drop. You can see this is the same exact load data. These bullets perform almost identical. I'm not 100% sure the difference. I looked it up at one time, but I can't recall at this moment. If someone knows the difference between the inner bond and the SST, go ahead and post it below in the comments. Federal Ammunition Nosler Partition, 130 grain, 2,012 feet per second, 1168 foot-pounds of energy. The 150 grain partition, 1238 foot-pounds of energy, 52 inch drop. So the partition is an older bullet. It's tried, proven, very successful penetrating round, but it is not the highest ballistic coefficient round available. And you can see the energies reflect that here with these smaller, higher efficient bullets. 
they get they perform much better farther out than uh, these older Nosser partitions do. Uh, but these Nosser partitions do penetrate very well. If you're hunting within a couple hundred yards, I'd definitely consider one of those. Um, Federal Ammunition Ballistics Tip. This is like a varmint load. 1209 foot-pounds of energy, 45-inch drop at 500 yards. Let's move on to the Creedmoor. You have 143 grain ELDX, 1309 foot-pounds of energy. I do want to state here uh, real quick, I've had a few people comment that the ELDX bullets don't hold together. They're getting confused with the AMAX bullets that uh, Hornady drew the design from for the ELDX. The AMAX bullets didn't have an interlock ring or anything like that, and so they did break apart when they hit the animal. They were a they are a competition load for target. They were not designed for hunting originally, but many people used them because they of their they had such high efficiency. They had a lot of downrange energy, and they would dump all that energy into the animal. The problem is is they wouldn't penetrate very well because they would break apart. The ELDX bullets is different because they have interlock ring inside there that keeps it together. I've I've killed two deer this year. And both times the bullet went all the way through. On the second one, my buck, it went through and hit the back shoulder and left a one and a half inch hole out the back end of the, the buck. So it stayed together very well even after hitting bone. It went through and stayed together very well. So I was very pleased with that. Of course, that was 162 grain ELDX out of my 7M M08, but it performed flawlessly. It perfect exactly how I'd expect a hunting bullet to perform at 300 yards. But here, you 143 grain ELDX, 1309 foot-pounds of energy for the Creedmoor at 500 yards, 147 grain ELD match bullet. This is, this is again, not for hunting. This is the AMAX version, basically, of the ELD. Uh, this is 1428 foot-pounds of energy, so you can see why people wanted to use it for hunting. The energy is just astounding uh, for this size of bullet at 500 yards, but it is not designed for hunting. You can use it, but you're not going to get as good a penetration. It's going to fall apart on you. 140 grain Boatel hollow point. American gunner uses self-defense target shooting varmint and small game. 1209 foot-pounds of energy at 500 yards. Then the SSTs, 1214 foot-pounds of energy, 500 yards. 120 grain GM, GMX, 1150. The 120 grain interlock, 1015 at 500 yards. And then trophy gain long range. This is another great one if you're going to be out shooting long range. Good for elk. Uh, lots of people have taken elk with this bullet here. And same with the ELDX there. Um, I know a lot of people don't think the Creedmoor is sufficient for elk. But if you look at the sectional density of the Creedmoor bullets, you can see they are higher than the 30 calibers out of the 300 wind mags. And they stay together and they have downrange energy that is, that is pretty impressive for the size of bullet that they are. And it allows people to take elk with them, I mean, fairly ethically. Uh, would it be my first choice? No, but there's there's people that use small... I know I know someone that uses a 243, and he takes elk, and he's almost always one shot, and they're down. Um, of course, he keeps it all within limits, but he is dead accurate with that 243, and that's why he uses it on everything he kills. He picks the best bullet for that, and, and he has killed at least 10 elk with his 243. That would not be my personal choice, and some people would question whether that's ethical or not. But, but he does an awesome job in his hands. I would, I would consider that an ethical gun for him. Anyway, sorry to get sidetracked there. This one here, 129 grain, 1243 foot-pounds of energy, 1065. And then here's the comparisons. The 270 Winchester from the factory has 1355 foot-pounds of energy, at average at 500 yards, and the 6.5 Creedmoor has 1204 average at 500 yards. Hand loads with the ELDX, 6.5 Creedmoor, 143 grain is 1331 foot-pounds of energy. The uh, 145 grain ELDX, 537 BC, this one's 625, in case you're wondering. It has 1410 foot-pounds of energy. This bullet's moving quite a bit faster out of this gun than this one is out of this gun. Uh, the energy is only 70 different or 80 different difference because of that ballistic coefficient on there. Anyway, uh, moving down to Nostler load data. 100 grain partition, 1771 on the most accurate, and 817 on the max load. The 125 grain partition is 1060 on the most accurate for from the Nostler load data, and 1148 on the max load from the load data from Nostler. And then moving down to 130 grain Acubon, this is basically the new version of the partition. It has the penetration that the partition had, but a sleeker design, a little bit more bliss, has a little bit higher ballistic coefficient there. 1095 at 500 yards for the most accurate, and 1230 for the most accurate on the max load there for foot-pounds of energy. 
Uh, the Acubon Long Range, this is an excellent bullet there. 1214 for the most accurate and 1359. Uh, on the Nosser website for the low data, it has the same recipes for all these bullets of the, the, the same weight. So these are, there's three different bullets here, all the same recipe for both of them. Same powders, same gun tested. This one is 19, or 910 foot-pounds of energy. For the partition, you move up to the Acubon 938. Same recipe, same powder. And then for the Acubon long range, you're 1193. So it's two, only two grains more, but 250 foot-pounds of energy more. Um, and that's on the, the most accurate. You go to the max, you're 1,440 foot-pounds. So 300 foot-pounds of energy more than the Acubon. Uh, because of this high efficient bu bullet here right there. Moving on to the Nostra load data for the 270 Winchester, 130 grain Acubond. Most accurate is 1277. The max load you can do that they list there is 1309. Your max and your most accurate will obviously vary, but this will give you an idea of what is possible based on what Nostra has tested. 140 grain partition, 1155 there. 1260 uh, there and then uh, again like I said Nostra uses the same load data for the same weight bullet so this is the same powder the same gun everything the only thing that's different is the bullet and you can see a big difference between the Acubon and the partition the max for the partition is 1260 whereas the max for the Acubon is 1411 so a big difference there um, based only on the higher efficient bullet there 150 grain partitions 1190 most accurate and 1326 foot pounds for the max load there. And then 150 grain Acubon long range has a whopping 1467 foot pounds for the most accurate and 1626 foot pounds for the max. Again, the long range bullets, they do have a great design, even just to 500 yards, which isn't that far. Uh, 500 yards is a, within 500 yards, I would say is a, is optimal for elk and you're getting 1626 foot pounds of energy out of this 150 grain bullet. That's pretty impressive. Uh, base that on the, I mean, you compare that to the 160 grain partition, 1159 for the most accurate and 1239 for the max. Big difference there. Um, and this is a lighter bullet. So 400 foot pounds difference right there. Pretty awesome. All right, let's move down to the results here. You can see the 6.5 Creedmoor. The most accurate load energy average is 1,025. The max is 1,177. The 270 most accurate is 1,257, and then the max is 1,361. So just under 200 foot-pounds more than the Creedmoor, as far as your average goes. Again, you can take that 1,411 foot-pound energy one for the Creedmoor, that 142 grain long range, but then you have the 150 grain long range for the this guy that's over 1600 foot pounds of energy so there you go they both have their strengths for sure target i would focus on this guy if you're doing some competition long range shooting for hunting all around flat shooting gun the 270 is hard to beat both will get the job done in any situation and a lot of it depends on the hunter so i appreciate you watching let me know if you have any questions or requests below uh, I'll continue to push out these videos and I'll also continue to do some hunting videos with my dog, uh, Hunter, my lab. You can see those shed videos I did recently where I was practicing with him. We're going to be going out next month with a couple other YouTubers, do some collaborations there and get some, uh, some shed hunting videos up for you. So let me know. Hopefully you're interested in those, but if you're just interested in the ballistic comparisons, I'll continue to do those. Let me know if you have any quest requests or questions and I'll be happy to put together a video for you. Go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell so you can see when I upload a video. And thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day.